who's sleeping. Yeah. Chelsea, not that you're sleeping. Can you read those ground rules for us? Can you project your voice? Keep an open, positive, and receptive atmosphere. Focus on the issue, not the person. Let me stop and do that. So you never say, you are so stupid. <laughs> you say, that idea, I don't think we're right, right? So you focus on the idea, not the person. You don't want to say, Jeremy, you always do that. No, you say, Jeremy, that behavior is not to be tolerated. Oh, it's not something. So, so focus on not the person. Focus on Continue. Allow others to speak without interruptions. All ideas are welcome. Build on others' ideas. Avoid side conversations. And accept that your way might not be the only way. So when you run a, thank you. When you run a formal meeting, let's say uh, Huang come out with an idea. You always ask for a second. Okay. Right in the formal meeting, in the, in the informal meeting, people might not do that. In the formal meeting, they always ask a second. Why is that? <coughs> Tradition? No. The idea is that one person raised an idea and say, I we should have a party. That's his idea. So if you deny it, he feel personally hurt. So when you ask for a second, let's say, Ernest second that, suddenly it's no longer his idea, it's the meeting's idea. So you take the idea away from personal issue and make it a group issue. So it's a, it's a good habit to say, uh, anyone second? If no second, then maybe there's no ground for further discussion, okay? So that's, except your way might not be the only way, is that when you propose something, if the chair asks for a second, then you kind of take away from that personal feeling but make it a group issue. Okay, that is the effective meeting. Next one I want to talk about, WBS. Okay, this is a, I will say this is a, in the ranking, Number one is set a SMART goal. Second one is run effective meeting. The third tool is work breakdown structure. So can someone look at this? Is what, what does it do for us? Let me see. Amy, why do we need work breakdown structure? So that you can assign tasks to individual members. That's right, you break a big project into smaller chunk. Until the chunk is small enough, you can say, Tara, can you do that, whatever that is? And Tara should be able to say, yes, I can do it. It'll probably take me about 40 minutes. You break it down to the level when you assign to someone, someone can give you a fairly confident yes or no, and give you, say, okay, I need $20 and 45 minutes. That's the level. If that person is very capable, you assign that person a big chunk, she or he can tell you that, that's, that's good. If you are working with people that have very inexperienced, then you need to break it down to a small chunk. So that, the big project could be your final video presentation, then you have a, you separate that into one is preparing the audio, one is preparing the, the, the video device, one write a script, the other one do the background research, one will be the director, one will be preparing food, no, something. Then you break it down, till to, till the, the block that you can clearly assign to someone. That someone should be able to tell you how long does it take, how much does it take. Then you can summarize all that, you know, total number of hours and total number of dollars. So not only for the team, for your own, for your own project, you should be able to break it down to a manageable chunk, okay? So let's kind of reflect upon your learning plan. If the top is your degree, okay? How do you break it down to the smaller chunk? What's the, what's the second level? MLOs. Sorry? The MLOs. The MLOs, right? So to, to achieve this degree, you need to fulfill this learning outcome. Then from that point on, the MLO is, you further break it down to what components? Different classes, right? And from different classes, you break it down to? 
skills. Probably every week, and every week you're breaking down to lecture, assignment. Then if you can really break it down, say, I want a degree, I want to achieve those learning outcomes, I need to take these classes, each class is 16 weeks, every week I need two hours of lecture or three hour lecture, one hour of uh, preview, two hours of assignment, then you can clearly map your entire study hour by hour. If you don't do that, that's okay, but then you, you never know what does it take. Okay? What does it take? So that is a good tool to have. The more complex a project, the more detail you need to do. So the one question people always ask, how do you break down to what level? What, what level of detail? Do you want to break it per minute? No. So you break it down to a level of detail that someone, you or someone can look at and say, yes, I can do it in this much. But how do you arrange the time? So the next one tool is called Get Chart. Thank you, Jimmy. So once you have a broke, uh, more breakdown structure, in this way they call it WBS, then each task has an ID. Then you could say, I think this is pretty good, you know, four days. That task needs four days. And that task has to be done after that. Okay. But some tasks could be parallel. For example, this one tells you that when we start a project, uh, activity A and activity B can start at the same time probably because they can be parallel or done by two person. This one has to be done before this one starts. Maybe because they're the same person or maybe because we have to, uh, the, this person's job depends on the outcome of that test. Okay, the detail, you probably need to take a project management class, but game chart is precisely what Jim is asking. How do you put those blocks in work breakdown structure into a timeline. Okay. And if this is done well, then you know exactly when it will be done. Right? Probably somewhere there it will be done. Then you can, so this is the beginning to say this is today. This is December 6th. Then you can track how we're doing in each of the tests. Okay. So this, another tool, this is to arrange the test need to be done on the timeline. This is called a game chart. Jim? I said, oh, I understand your brackets, but what is the dotted line? The dotted line, is the, this is today. So the dotted line is moving from day one to the end. So at any moment, you can check to say, OK, at this time, obviously, this should be done. This should be done maybe you know 60%. Then you can check with the individual person that in charge of the Work breakdown structure 1.3, and you can check to see are you done with 60%. This is to track which part of the project is delayed or ahead. So the dotted line is today. And these are, we don't have to talk detail, but these are the kind of dependency. This means that these two tests have to start together. This one says this has to be done before this is done. This says this two tests has to be finished together. But those are the details. So this is a tool to arrange your timeline. Question? And I put a uh, sample of meeting agenda there. I don't know if you see. Let me just leave it to you there. Facilitator, that means the chair who calls the meeting. Uh, meeting number, huh? You might want to put some, if you have many meetings, you have to give each meeting an ID. Meeting date, starting time, end time, and who is taking the notes. Okay. So overall objective for the meeting, and uh, who is su supposed to participate. These are the major topics. These are the conclusions. And what do we do? When do we going to meet next time? And uh, uh, these are other notes, including maybe kind of other ideas. So you can, you can take a look. This is a sample. You don't have to follow it, but this is a good sample to, to take a look. Okay. So that's, that's your uh, about 
one hour of project management, and uh, people take uh, a whole semester class to do the detail. Each one of them have more detail, uh, like you know, how do you tune the budget, how do you uh, encourage a participant, how do you communicate with outside uh, clients, how do you uh, move uh, resources around to make sure uh, the resource are used in the most efficient way. So it's, itself is a discipline. Okay. The basics. Okay. So, like I have preached to you, and let me summarize today. So today we know the basics, rationale, and process of getting an internship. I highly encourage you to do that. Even it's free. Even you have to sign the form and say I volunteer. That is valuable compared to stay home and watch football. So you, sh you should do it, even just for, you know, 40 hours doing the next semester, still worth it. Uh, you, we learned a little bit about resume, right? So it should be clean, precise, for entry-level job, one page. ITCD is always looking for a couple of interns. If you're interested, let me know. Um, probably need about four hours a week in design or technology. And we talked about you need to uh, really get together to have a planning meeting or planning process for your final uh, presentation. And we spent about half an hour on your uh, project management, okay? So project management, let me, let, let me ask you to help me summarize. What are the key tools in project management, we have five or six of them. If you can let me know, then we'll smart let goal. you smart, good. smart goal. That's a game chart. Yeah. Game, game chart. Have a schedule. Have a schedule. WBS. WBS. Work breakdown structure. Yeah. Effective meeting. Yeah. If you hit those five, that's a simple magic. Say, wow, the project is not too hard. If you don't do that, you have communication problem, people don't know what they're doing, you have trouble. So part of our profession now and the future is running projects. So keep those simple things in mind and use them. It's not only a knowledge, you need to use them to get used to them. Good? I will see you uh, next week.